Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. Uh, it's been a little while, but it's great to be back. Um, well, just about a week ago, I had the opportunity to phone in and talk with the guys over at the Seven Ages Audio Journal during their end of the year podcast. And through that process, I thought, you know, you know what, I I need to put together something like that to wrap up uh, the year here at the Dabbler's Den because. Uh, really, what an amazing year 2018 has been for the channel and the entire Younger Dryas Impact community as a whole. Um, I've met quite a few amazing people uh, along the way, and, and I really do appreciate all of you who have subscribed, liked, and commented on my videos. You know, without you guys, this dabble would have shifted gears months ago. Uh, well, back in February, I started my uh, series on the Carolina Bays, uh, which really have done quite well, uh, considering... Uh, and, you know, if you haven't seen them uh, yet, just click on the link above and watch it from the beginning. You know, just be warned, your mind might explode. <laughs> uh, well, during that same month, uh, the Comet Research Group presented and published their burn papers, uh, which really kicked off the Younger Dryas excitement for the year. Uh, for months following, various articles, podcasts, and YouTube channels like mine continued to fuel the fire. Uh, for a full rundown of events, uh, head over to George Howard's website, the uh, Cosmic Tusk, uh, which I'll link. I'll provide a link for in the, in the description below. Uh, and if you click on the little hamburger icon in the upper right-hand corner of his page, then click on All Post Archive, uh, you can see a great timeline of events for this topic going all the way back to 2008. Um, I definitely suggest that you go over there and check it out. And, and let me also just quickly add that while I do support everything George has done over the, uh, you know, from really the very beginning, um, I, I do not in any way speak for him or anybody else that I have mentioned uh, by name throughout my series, especially when it comes to the Carolina Bays. You know, he and others have made it pretty clear that, uh, you know, they would prefer the topic of the Carolina Bays take a back seat uh, while the rest of this new younger dry science gets settled out. But that's why I'm here. You know, the bays are way too in your face uh, as to what's wrong with our current scientific thinking and processes to be ignored. Uh, so with that, I say bring on 2019. Now, in mid-November of this year, just a few days after I published my last uh, or I uploaded my last video, um, an international team of scientists completely separate from the Comet Research Group, which is which is actually super important, by the way. Um, published their findings of a fairly large and recent impact crater just at the northwest edge of the Hiawatha Glacier in Greenland. Now, this is huge news, uh, but I didn't want to jump out and comment on it right away. And quite honestly, it could take, it could be years uh, before we start seeing definitive answers coming from this 19 mile wide hole in the ground. Uh, but it is still very, uh, it's extremely exciting and worth mentioning now anyways. Um, as far as timing, the scientists are being very conservative, stating that it could it, it could have occurred any time during the Pleistocene epoch, which spans you know over two million years. Um, however, if you read between the lines and listen to the interviews, I think it is safe to say that uh, you know they are looking at a very recent impact and likely very close to the Younger Dryas timeline. You know, the sharpness of the crater features, both within and around the crater, uh, are a pretty good indicator. Uh, but I think it's these, you know, it's these um, uh, glacial cross sections that are going to be the most telling. You know, basically the entire crater is filled to the top with layered new Holocene age ice. Um, and it's only the bottom portion of this ice that is older, but it's all mashed up and, and, and non-uniform. Um, now, let me also say that regardless of the timing, this impact is definitely not directly related to the formation of the Carolina Bays. I am still 100% pointing my fingers at Saginaw Bay for that. Uh, but if this crater is found to be formed right at the Younger Dryas boundary, then it could mean a few things. You know, one, it could mean that we are looking at multiple impact fees, you know, mul sorry, we're looking at a multiple impact event spanning a few thousand years, uh, which has been hypothesized in the past. Um, it could also mean that we are looking at a single event with multiple impact sites um, caused by a fragmented comet or asteroid, which is the direction I'm leaning towards. Um, now, as you can see here, if you line up the Saginaw Bay with the Hiawatha Crater, you know, the straight line passes right over some very peculiar geologic fe features within the Hudson Bay, like the Hudson Arc. And, you know, no one seems to want to even touch that one. 
um, or these, and I quote, ring-like features uh, that are found on the bottom of Hudson Bay. I mean, how many dots do we need to connect before we reevaluate what really happened here during our own human history? Um, I'll add that while the Hiawatha Crater alone is impressive, its size and location can't explain all that we see happening at the YD boundary. Uh, now, if you pepper this entire region of what was the Laurentide A sheet with flaming hot space debris, then yeah, I could, I could see that. Um, oh, <laughs> and, and then on December 22nd, we get this little gem all wrapped up like a perfect Christmas package, even with a bow on top. You know, once again, a completely separate scientific team this time from the Czech Republic, uh, was able to link the gravitational disturbances and anomalies of Saginaw Bay specifically with other large known impacts from around the world, including the Chicxulub crater in the Yucatan Peninsula that is credited with wiping out the dinosaurs. So, you know, this, and, and to quote the paper's conclusion itself, at the beginning of our analysis of the younger driest impact hypothesis, our attitude of this hypothesis was neutral. After the analysis, we provide circumstantial evidence of it and cautiously support it. <laughs> I mean, that's music to my ears. Um, and again, uh, you know, don't take my word for it. Head over to the Cosmic Tusk and uh, read the whole article for yourself. It's really quite fascinating. <sighs> okay, guys, once again, you know, thank you all for your support uh, to help make 2018 an outstanding year. Uh, with your continued support, we will make 2019 even better. You know, heads are starting to turn and eyes are beginning to open or roll, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I truly feel that we are in for a big, big year. You know, as far as my channel is concerned, I plan to start a new series uh, very soon focusing on geospatial analysis using LIDAR and Google Earth. Um, we're going to go on a few short virtual field trips, highlighting some very interesting geologic features um, that the introduction of LIDAR has really helped bring to light. Um, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to help get the word out about these groundbreaking topics. And, uh, you know, thanks again. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.